If Jonathan Gullis is the answer, what is the question? Now, Tory MP Jonathan Gullis has been appointed as a... Now, he, he's what Tim Stanley would call a real Conservative. Proper Tory. Has been appointed as a Deputy Chairman of the Conservative Party this evening. He's tweeted that he is ready to take the fight to <laughs> Sir Keir's hopeless and hapless Labour Party. By sticking to the plan, we'll grow the economy, stop the boats and level up across the country, he says. Well, that's original, isn't it? Um, is he the party's new Lee Anderson, Tim? Oh, that, that's obviously literally the spot he's filling, isn't it? Um, I, I suppose because Anderson's job was previously chairman or deputy chairman deputy, of the party. Yeah. Deputy chairman of the party. To be honest, this is rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic about 100 years after the Titanic has sunk. Right, it's not... It's 100, not even, 112. 112. Right, OK. It's not even just as it's going towards the iceberg. The party is, is completely over. Uh, and I'm just impressed at this stage that they can find anyone who hasn't done the role, who hasn't been sacked or resigned from it in disgrace by this point. I mean, really, I, any discussion of internal Tory politics is just farcical. And I, I always, when thinking about the Tories' latest psychodrama, I always come back to there's that uh, wonderful line in the thick of it, full of great lines, in which an MP says, that if she admits to something wrong, she'll go from someone who people are angry with to someone who they're laughing at. And this is the problem with the Conservative Party. Some time ago, they switched from someone who people are angry at to someone who they're just yeah, laughing the, at at this stage. The, the worst thing you can so get. I, I don't know who else you could put up in that position who might do any better. Lawrence Fox. I don't know. I, don't know. I, I presume don't know. that was a joke. Basil Brash. I don't know. We're, we're at that stage where not only does nothing surprise me, but crucially, it doesn't matter. No one's paying any attention and it won't move the dial. Justine. Well, I in fact, was... can you all three of you be quite brief on this? Because I do want to get another question, and it's mm. an important one. Mm. So I was thinking of uh, Jonathan Goodish shouting out, bad joke, bad joke, bad joke, at PMQs. Um, and, it, you know, if, the, uh, if he's the answer to the, what's the question, then maybe the question is, what's a bad joke? And it's <laughs> Lee Anderson, Mark II, possibly. Um, I, I, you know, I don't dislike Jonathan on a personal level, but I don't think a strategy of the Conservative Party continuing to be reform light is going to do anything other than take it towards defeat at the next election. So I, I think all of these chances to put people in roles ultimately tell you what the strategy of is of Rishi Sunak, and I think it seems to be to be reform light, and I, I think that's a mistake. Um, Jonathan was on this programme a few months ago with Jackie Smith, and I thought they would be going at it hammer and tong. They were charming the pants off each other, basically. It was a, it's sort of rather odd to watch. Jonathan? It, it makes me feel rather sorry for Rishi Sunak, because actually I think he's a reasonably decent politician and in a different time he, he would have made a better Prime Minister. But I think he's got these two massive albatrosses around his neck of uh, Boris Johnson and the uh, and all the scandals surrounding him and the Liz Truss. And I think whoever succeeded those two uh, would have would, would, would never succeed. Jenny? I can hear a sort of scraping noise at the bottom of the barrel. Essentially, they have just run out of any talent, any um, any honesty, really. Yep, time to go. General election. But isn't, isn't the lesson here that whoever runs the Conservative Party next actually does need to know how to deliver whatever we call it, levelling up, breaking down barriers, equality of opportunity, social mobility, and ideally should have some lived experience. Someone accuse of, you of being woke with all that list. Maybe, but it's coming to Britain because it's what people vote for. So I think the party, whoever's running it next, needs to really understand that issue, why it's important, and to have some personal experience that means they have a chance of actually working out a policy agenda to deliver some change. I think anyone who, who runs the party next needs to understand that um, some of these policies are deeply, deeply unpopular and they just oh. haven't worked uh, out. Uh, hang on, breaks on here. I would remind you that Gullis was elected in 2019 as part of a landslide headed by Boris Johnson off the back of Brexit, which was distinctly anti-woke and was very right-wing and populist and was very popular. The problem, as has been mentioned, is the Tories have been hit by Ukraine, by Covid, but also by the ineptitude of Liz Truss it and by also by Boris Johnson. It's not the right-wing or populist politics that run popular. on levelling up and it was powerful, important rhetoric that actually... I came up with in the Department for Education to talk about social mobility, but the big mistake was there was no plan. And what right. people are voting for now in Britain is a government that will deliver on a plan and they will switch 
until they find that government. And it's a message for right. Labour too at the next election. If they don't deliver on it, maybe they'll have a short existence too.